blessed Easter to all of you. It's uh, so wonderful to be using this uh, platform because rather than a virtual service, as some churches are doing, we can actually see each other. The challenge is, of course, muting. Uh, if you're not playing a role in the service, uh, please uh, mute your uh, computers at this time. Uh, and when it's called for a response, uh, uh, you can respond at home, but Ben uh, will be responding on your behalf during the responses. But don't worry, uh, we're going to let things run wild during the passing of the peace. So uh, at that time, uh, you can unmute. Uh, let us begin. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the book of Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. 
When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with God, Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. <clears throat> but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned around and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia, alle, alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. You may be seated or reclined, or you may stand up, or you may continue with your Pilates, whatever you are doing. However best you connect at this time, we welcome all of you. So here's the question for today. When does he Easter happen? When is joy? and love and peace set free? When can victory over death be proclaimed? When does the story of the resurrection become our story? And what triggers this transformation? The reason why I ask this question is because I have been hearing clergy across the diocese and nation talk about having a huge Easter celebration once the shelter in place order is lifted. I love a good party. I kind of like this idea of coming back with all the stops pulled out with full choirs accompanied by brass and timpani, thick with the fragrance of Easter lilies, warmed in candlelight, tons of people all dressed in their Sunday best and families flowering the cross. Maybe we could do that. But other than being unrealistic about returning to whatever we called normal, there has been something deeper that has bothered me about this conversation. Why does the true meaning of Easter have to be celebrated later? What is wrong with now? And it got me thinking, how did the original Easter happen? When did it happen? What triggered the transformation of the world? Now, this is where, if I were giving a children's sermon, the so-called correct answer from the children would be stated. Jesus rose from the dead. That's how it started. And yes, this was the primal trigger. 
but the transformation of history, the explosion of a new concept of how we see and experience God, the complete release of a religious movement that could and was called good news, happened when something happened to very real people like you and like me. How did that happen? To find the answer to that question, all we have to do is pay attention to the stories of our faith. Please know that the Easter message did not happen or emerge in the glory of a richly appointed temple or synagogue. The Easter message was first proclaimed in a house that was under lockdown. When Mary ran back from the tomb, she probably had to knock on the locked door where the disciples were hiding. She stepped into a room thick with fear, exhaustion, and hopelessness. It was there that she proclaimed, I have seen the Lord. But Easter did not happen for everyone the same way or at the same time. Easter happened to Mary and it led to the very first Easter sermon, a sermon preached by a woman who, by the way, had the courage to also stay with Jesus during his very public crucifixion. But this first sermon fell on deaf ears. Each disciple had to find their own way of receiving this message for themselves. Case in point, Easter clearly happened to Thomas, but that took some time. It even took Jesus inviting him to put his fingers into his wounds. It's different for each of us. God knows who we are, what we need, and he will respond to us. Eventually, more disciples caught this victory virus and it began to spread. But let me be clear here. It spread in the midst of a plague of fear. It spread partly because of that plague. The emerging church did not wait to embrace the meaning of Easter once the Roman occupation was over. They did not wait for three centuries when finally the emperor would embrace the Christian faith. The resurrection happens in lockdowns and fear-infused, unsafe environments. It happened person to person and house to house, and it would be centuries before the institutional church would dominate the scene, a church that would often forget the real power of resurrection. Side note here, I'm glad the churches are empty this morning. It's an opportunity to remind us all that the resurrection happens in our very real lives. It's not some fancy story that can only be told in an ornate building accompanied by beautiful music and finery. In fact, one church sign that someone sent me this week read, the church is empty, but so is the tomb. <laughs> Easter does not need organized religion. Easter does not need theology. Easter does not need bishops or priests or prayer books or Bibles or tradition. So what does Easter need? What makes Easter happen? When does it happen? Simply put, Easter takes root when fear is overcome. I would go so far to say that fear has to be present to fully get the Easter message. Fear is like the fire that releases the seed in a pine cone. We will not understand Easter if fear is not front and center, and it is. But here's the kicker. The fear that the disciples face ultimately is the fear of the resurrection itself. Barbara Brown Taylor puts it this way. So of course the women were scared when they saw the stone rolled away from the tomb. They had come to conduct a funeral, not a revolution. They had come to grieve not to organize. This is amazing because of course the disciples were experiencing great fear, 
But that was a fear about what might happen to them. But God then injects a greater fear, a fear that we have power, that we have an opportunity to change the world, a fear that challenges us to face all fear and overcome it. In fact, the great rabbi Harold Kushner once shared a story about how his vision of God's message was transformed by someone asking him to summarize all the stories of faith, to boil it down into a statement. He thought about it, and he boiled it down to two words, fear not. So how do we overcome fear? Mary Lou Weissman, who began her career as a journalist for the New York Times, found herself writing a book entitled Intensive Care, a book she wished she never had to write, because it tells of the moving and tragic story of the death of her 15-year-old son, Peter, from muscular dystrophy. It's an amazing story about how a family continues to find life and joy and even humor in a journey that no one would choose. She tells about an astonishing thing that happened right after, right at the moment of her son's death. Peter's body was completely paralyzed in the final stages of his disease and the delirium of death was taking over his mind in his last few minutes of his life. He was moaning, random and disconnected in his thoughts. His voice, she wrote, sounded so far away, so lost. But then suddenly in a surprisingly clear voice, Peter spoke directly to Larry, his father. Daddy, what does impudent mean? Bewildered and frightened, Larry and Mary Lou looked at each other. What could this strange question from their dying son possibly mean? Daddy, what does impudent mean? Even though he had tears streaming from his eyes, Larry answered Peter matter-of-factly. Impudent, son, impudent means bold. It means shamelessly bold. Peter paused for a moment, death closing its grip on him, and then he said, then put me in an impudent position. And sure enough, just before their son died, Larry and Mary Lou positioned Peter's arms and legs in a posture of bold defiance, an impudent position in the face of death. When does Easter happen? It happens when we choose to be impudent, shamelessly bold, defiant. It happens when you are face to face with the question of what kind of person do you want to be right now? Do you want to cower in the corner and feel helpless to be a victim? Or do you want to reach deep to that place that turns to face your worst fears? to take up the cross and follow Jesus. At the end of World War II, Winston Churchill was at a dinner and a man stood up and said, at the Battle of the Bulge, we had evidence that the British soldiers were braver than the Nazi soldiers. The Battle of the Bulge proved that. Churchill got up to speak and he said, that's not true. The Nazi soldiers were just as brave as the British soldiers, but the British soldiers were brave for five minutes longer. Impudence is that characteristic that says, I will outlast you, I will not fear you, no matter what happens, I will face life with courage. And as a person of faith, it means standing on the promises of God that God will never forsake you, never leave you alone, will always love and accept you, and will make you a victor. On this Easter morning, may we let Easter happen. As we are locked down in our houses, let us unlock our hearts and let Easter in. Let us find within our hearts the impudence, the courage, and the faith to cast out fear to outlast the pressure we feel around us, even if by five minutes.
Join the revolution, a revolution of a more perfect love that casts out, out all fear. Let Easter happen. Let Easter happen now, right now. Alleluia, alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Nicene Creed, we believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people for April 12th, 2020, Easter Sunday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the people of the land of the Holy One. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Resurrection, Pleasant Hill. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Mark Andrus, our bishop, and the clergy and staff of St. John's. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name they may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Guide, this, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours 
and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For health care workers and those caring for the sick, keep them free from anxiety and infection. For those with the coronavirus and those who have died, their families, and those who mourn. For those keeping our infrastructure in operation, for those in isolation and those in close quarters, for the poor, the persecuted, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. We pray also for the needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially this week, Lorna Ahn, Allen, Marion Barnes, Kathy Araujo, Beatrice Blaine, Mary Bluen, Elise Byron, Lisa Cadwallader, Max Casbo, Frank Chang, Carrie Choi, Scott Christensen, Clayton, Sandra Davidson, Nick DeGroot, Susie DeGroot, Loretta Fong, Susan Freeman, Gil Gleason, Cookie Green, Stacy Halverson, Jennifer Heron, Ira Hicks, Allison Hogan, Fiona Joyce, Catherine Cott, Lara Pierpoint, and the Pierpoint Ware family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering especially this week, Marion Bertotti, Miss Nell, and Bob Middleton, that you will find for, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that they may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> the concluding collect. Gracious God, who desires wholeness and well being, help us pray for the suffering of our world. Guide us in grieving lives lost and in vulnerable lives threatened. May love, not fear, go viral. Call us to trust in your presence. You are God who does not abandon. And help us remember, fear does not mean hate. Isolation does not mean loneliness. Panic does not mean meanness. Sickness is not a disease of the soul. And that we are always precious to you and ever encompassed by your love. Amen. Now that I've unmuted myself, you can unmute too. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Also with you. Get the gallery view. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Oh, <laughs> 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 See everybody. Easter. <laughs>
Scott, you need to unmute yourself again. <laughs> part of the joy, part of the joy of uh, online service is that you can mute your pastor. That's something you will really miss. <laughs> um, are there any birthdays or anniversaries out there today that we can say a prayer for and honor you? My birthday is this Tuesday, and Caroline is on Thursday. This is Joan. Okay, Joan and Caroline. Anyone else? All right. Then let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall and in their hearts. May your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the time when we normally flower the cross, something that's incredibly beautiful. One of the things I know that I miss sorely. Uh, it's one of my favorite mo moments on Easter morning. It is so powerful and beautiful to see the huge cross which we processed on Good Friday, being covered in flowers, seeing the power of community when everyone takes part in turning something dark and painful into something of beauty. Although we cannot be together this morning, we can spread the color and the scent of love as we remember someone we want to just call today to wish them a happy Easter and let them know you were thinking of them. Maybe someone that you need to call today might even require a little impudence, a little courage, and a lot of love. God bless you as you share some of this Easter joy. And now, a blessing straight from Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you now and forever. Amen. Finally, you know, it's our tradition to uh, sing the Hallelujah Chorus and uh, uh, we're, you know, going to 
although I have all of you on mute, you can sing to, to the rafters at home while uh, we join together in this amazing piece of music. peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Please join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. We'll be having a book discussion on the cloud of knowing with uh, Sarah Jones and Ray Reese and the Praying Chicks. Again, that's 10 a.m. Look for the email for your Zoom invite. Have a wonderful and happy Easter. Here we are. Hi. 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 So Hi. Happy Easter. 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 Happy Eas
Oh, some people are super crazy. Man. Looks like he's in Star Wars. <laughs> 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 Hi, oh, Candy Parker. I do. Great hats. Hi, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesse, where? Helen has a. I like so. Yeah, I'm on there, and I took the. Sarah Blaine. Hi, Alice. Hello, dude. Hi, Brian. Welcome everyone. Hey, June. Wow, fun to see June. Happy Easter, St. John's. Oh, Jennifer. Happy Easter, St. John's. Charlotte Milne, how are you? Yeah. 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 Oh, come on.